Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today we have Andre Chaperone who's one of the top email marketing experts on the planet. His Autoresponder Madness course is the number one email marketing course endorsed by some of the biggest names in the marketing industry and it's because of the tremendous results people get with it. And I just want to tell one short story. Andre is the master at stories, which we'll get into. But I was on the phone with a friend one morning and he starts ranting about how he's the second in line. You know, he's losing this guy in this affiliate promotion with some big cash prizes. And it wasn't that he was right behind. He was a distant second. And he kept <laughs> saying, this guy is superhuman. I don't know what he's doing. He's superhuman. He's superhuman. Somehow I immediately knew, Andre, it was you. So I interrupted him. I'm like, okay. Who's this guy? Who's a superhuman person? And he said, Andre Chaperone. So, Andre, <laughs> thanks for joining me. You're welcome. welcome. You froze for Good a second. You froze for a second there. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Andre, since this is Inspired Insider, you know, my question is, what do you think about that inspires and motivates you when times are tough? to push forward when money was tight to push forward? Um, well, the one thing is I've, I've told myself that I'm never ever going to go back and get a job. So it, in my mind, I've burnt that bridge. And I've um, ages ago, I never allowed myself to ever think about going back. So it's always been you have to make this work. There's just no other way around it. Um, so in the beginning, that was that worked really well because there was no option B or plan B. There yeah. was only a plan A, and the plan A was just to hustle and make it work, and um, kind of worked out. So, what were you picturing in your mind that was so painful that you just burned that bridge? You're like, I'm never doing that. I don't know. I think maybe I was just lucky or fortunate. I don't know if if that's the right answer, but I just had this, this uh, burning, I just knew that it would work out. There was just this crazy belief that I had. And certainly in the beginning, there was, there was no foundation behind that. It was like, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing, but there was this belief. And, um, I just, I just knew that at some point it, it would work out because that's the way things work. Right. <laughs> what was that? Where did that belief come from though? Was it just, I know I'm smart enough, I can make anything work, or I saw this person do it, or I remember this other person did it and I can do it too. What was what was going through your mind that yeah, gave you that confidence? That, I, 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 I knew people were making it work. I've never considered myself to be the smartest person out there, so it's like, well, I'm smarter than them, I can do this. I don't ever see that, I don't always look at it that way because I don't really understand or, or know how smart somebody else is. Right. And they probably are smarter than me anyway, so <laughs> it's more that, I know other people have are doing this, and it's just a matter of being persistent. And a lot of people that don't get success are the ones that are bailed out just before mm -hmm. they potentially going to get that success. It's it's almost easier to quit than it is to 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 forge forward. Um, it's harder to go forward, especially when 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 things are tough. Yeah. So yeah, it's just just to roll that dice and have the guts to just to. Just to do it. Yeah. I'm just wondering where that persistence and hustle comes from. Like a lot of times you hear when it's so painful, like money drives people, they usually grow up in like a really, they don't, they grow up with a lot. And so they always felt that need to, um, I don't know if it's compensate or just to produce a lot. What was it for you that creates this hustle and persistence? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't fortunate enough to, to, to be born into money at all. So, um, it's always been been a hustle, I guess. Um, it's just my desire to never have to never work for a boss. I think, I, I guess that's that's deep down. It's, it's I, I don't want to be part of the system and work in a cubicle. Um, I mean, did you see that with your dad complaining about that, or or what? Yeah, he was just a person that from the day that he finished school, he he got into the hospital services and he and he spent his, his entire life there until he retired. So he's he's of the he's old school, you know. He's those people that you get a job and you stay and you stay at a job for the rest of your life. Right. I think those those days are long gone; they don't exist anymore. Right. I don't think 
anybody can, can, can have a job, even if they wanted to keep it forever. Yeah. You know? I'm just wondering uh, if there was one experience you had with a boss that it's so painful. You're like, I would never, I never want to spend my time in a cubicle. No, nah, I've just always had this, 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 this feeling just that, knew. that everything's temporary um, while I was working. So for those 11 years while I was working or however many years it was, um, I just knew that it, it was all temporary. <laughs> I obviously didn't know at which point it was going to become less temporary, but um, yeah. it was going to happen at some point. Yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that and all your insights. Andre, it's been an absolute pleasure. And anything, anything I didn't ask you, that you think would be important to mention any story that like jeremy i need to share this with the audience um i think one of the most inspirational books i've read is um uh, turning pro um this there's, there's also do the work and the third one is um the war of art yeah all, all from the same author but um i think his latest one uh, turning pro is just uh, it's a it's a short easy read and it's it's just so motivating. Um, I hate reading. I battle to read business books for the simple fact that I've got to work my way through three or four hundred pages of stuff that they could have really summed it down um, down into like five pages. Just just give me the facts. Right. Whereas the Turning Pro book, every single page, which is short, or well, the pages are short, it's just all amazing insights. There's there's nothing he could have taken out. It made that book any shorter. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I enjoyed mm -hmm. reading that. Otherwise, the other big insight for me is reading fiction. But that's because I write. So, what fiction would you s tell people to start with? What do you like? Well, I'm I'm dyslexic and I can't read really? or write pretty much. Yeah, uh, sorry, I I didn't mention that. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, there was some so. article on people like a high number of. Uh, successful founders or CEOs are dyslexic. Yeah, I had a hard time growing up, um, and yeah, I went to to a special school at one point because I was like slow, you know, um, in terms of I couldn't. I was a really bad reader. In fact, I still am a bad reader. Um, I don't read fast, um, and I can't spell. Like I can't spell at all. So oh. thank God for for auto spellers. Yeah. Um, but so because of that reason, I never read, read any books. So my first book that I read since leaving school, and even at school, I never ever read one book cover to cover. I used to just hustle. I used to read the, the back page of the book and then maybe one, one, uh, like a few pages of, of, of every chapter and then just make up the story. And that's how I used to do my, my book reviews. Wow. But my very first book I read was when I was 35 years old. I'm 41 now, so really? just a few years ago. And wow. since since that day, it's obviously changed the way that, that I write. And I've I've since read hundreds and hundreds of books, but they're all fiction books. Almost all of them are fiction books. Really? So what do you um, like? So the first book I read was um, Persuader by Lee Child. And it completely, it was like the most amazing thing ever. It's, it's influenced my writing more, more so than, than any copywriting book I've ever read. Wow, and it's just a fiction book. It's just the way that he writes his his writing style just resonated with me instantly, and I ended up reading all the books in that series in like in, in no time. And I'm like, like I said, I'm a slow reader, <laughs> so it takes me a while to get yeah. to get through a book. So, did you um, up to that point listen to audio, or what did you do? Yeah, uh, I listened to Audible books, but yeah, I love you know, Audible. Yeah, uh, me too. And also, the reason why I buy lots of Audible now is. I can listen to uh, stuff at uh, two times the speed. Yeah, I listen to so three times. Yeah, <laughs> some things you you can go up to three times, and, yeah. which is good for me because no matter how fast I try and read, I can't read at two speed. Right? No possible way. No, so it's it's good that I can I can get through a book quickly. So I typically get all my business books as as Audible because yeah. I find it difficult to read business books. Yeah. Um, but then fiction books, I want to read those things, so I just get them all on Kindle and I'll and, and I'll read them. It doesn't matter if, if it takes three weeks to read a book, you know, it's still, I'm getting a massive amount of enjoyment from, from reading it and it's all about the storytelling and stuff. So yeah, um, just read lots of fiction, now, even though I'm a bad reader and I can't spell. I am not a good reader either. Um, how did you adapt with being dyslexic? 
Because that's hard know. to go through school. I mean, to you go through everything with things getting jumbled. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've just never been able to spell. I mean, uh, and even at at matric, which is where, which which is like the last the last year of school. Um, even then, when we had um, spelling tests and spelling stuff, the um, I used to literally get zero out of twenty on spelling tests, and the teacher. She said, "This guy's just like jerking off. He's just like he's just making this stuff up because it, it's impossible to be that bad." But yeah, I was I was that bad. Um, my my wife's um, she's Bulgarian, and she she moved to South Africa when she was thirteen years old, and she couldn't speak a word of English. Wow. Um, she's now obviously speaks fluent English, and she's got a South African accent. She learned English in South Africa. But I actually ask her how do I spell this, how do I spell that, and she's she breaks. Just, but in, in my head, when I'm trying to spell out words, you know, obviously all the easy ones I, I can get. But there's there's words that I can sit there, and even the actual spell checker can't figure it out. So then I'll go to Google and I'll go to Google search, and then um, if you type in a, a, a misspelled word in Google search. You typically get the right answer because it's had so many people. Right, it like right. auto fills into what you want. Yeah. So Google search is actually way better than than any. Um, that's spell a good check. point. Yeah. So that's what I end up using. That's crazy, Andre. So you're dyslexic, and pretty much all day you're writing. Yeah, it's the strangest thing, isn't it? How did that happen? So I mean, yeah, if I can do it, anybody can do it, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Andre, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. I hope to one day I will uh, get to meet you face to face. Maybe it's at Oceans. Maybe it's somewhere else. I'm in Chicago. What's... You'll let me know if you're ever in Chicago. Okay. Yes. Yes. I've never been to Chicago, but uh, absolutely. Or we'll be going to Spain. My wife did study there for uh, for a year, so we'll eventually be going back. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but thank you so much, Andre. I appreciate it. You're welcome, man.